morning, I guess. It's like uh, 1 a.m. here now, but it's, I just took multiple takes to do this intersection. So, like, uh, we'll just get into this part of video. So, like, uh, welcome to the new phase of channel, I guess. Like, uh, from this part on, I'll be working on making machine learning tutorials too and uh, GitHub game development process and I'll try to combine them both to reinforcement learning, I guess. Uh, the thing is, like, I wanted to, uh, I'm same as passionate about making games and making machine learning algorithms. I'm, I'm in the mixed state of dilemma right now about machine learning and uh, making games. But uh, I think I could figure it out, I guess. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing with it. So, what I'm, uh, what I'm thinking is like, you know, in many other YouTube channels, like you have the stuff, you implement those things, uh, what you learn, and you have the stuff uh, you learn theoretically, but there is no a channel or a community where you learn theoretical stuff and you implement those by doing some case studies. So that's what I'm trying to do in this channel. That's what makes us unique, I guess. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, that's what the agenda of this tutorial and what I'm trying to achieve in this. So with that, let's get started what we are going to do with this machine learning stuff and and uh, what, I, what I was doing in this past few months. So the first, for the past few months, what I, what I was there, like uh, I was in a state of dilemma and I was working in, uh, I was busy with my college stuff, semesters and shit. And and let us say like uh, I was fully busy with that thing, so I couldn't focus on making games or uh, doing tutorials. So now I'm kind of free to do those things. Uh, so what I'm doing is like uh, make an ML tutorial and roadmap of it. What is going to come in uh, in ahead videos? Like in the first, in this video, I'll just. Uh, kind of show you like, I don't want to leave you guys empty ended with my boring speech. So uh, what I planned for this video is like, we could just make some uh, installation and process something like that. So we could use of, we could use uh, WSL for the stuff which we don't have in Windows, you could use in Linux and uh, I'll give you an idea of what is a WSL and I'll give you an idea of what is CUDA and why we need CUDA for deep learning in NVIDIA cards for Apple and for MacBook M1 chips, you have specific neural engines to train on it. There is separate other compiler for in PyTorch to train on Apple Apple machines. And for AMD cards, uh, I don't know much about AMD cards because you guys have Vulkan inbuilt in your computer. But uh, I don't know much about AMD cards. But in future videos, I'll just try to cover for AMD cards too. But uh, right now, let's just focus on. Uh, NVIDIA, which most of them have, I guess, we could just uh, uh, try to do installation of CUDA and QDNN into that. And after that, uh, we'll just jump into what's WSL and wow, how we could do operations on that and how we could import those uh, files into that. And later on, we'll just look about JAX in, in general and and afterwards, PyTorch. And with, Without any further ado, let's get started. Coming back to installation. Uh, what I really think of installation is like first you need to install CUDA and QDN. And CUDA is for uh, stuff which you do uh, with graphics and stuff. Like uh, give you a low level abstraction what it does. It gives you computation power to do some shit like uh, deep learning or machine learning. QDN like focus more on that. Uh, on that machine learning stuff. That's the thing. So to do the stuff, you need to install CUDA and CUDA and everything. So I won't be going like uh, process going in depth of CUDA and CUDA and because uh, there is a well documented stuff. You can do it literally like uh, following those tutorials uh, given by them. So I won't be like uh, going in depth into that. But I'll kind of refer to the videos uh, which is which you can install those uh, CUDA and QDN and integrate them with them. So what we'll be focusing more on this tutorial is WSL and how we could do it. So to get started with WSL, you have to go to command prompt and you can just 
type WSL dot install. So you have this. So it will be installing Ubuntu here. But what I did is like uh, since I have no space in my drive, I gone to other drive and exported towards it. So what I'm using, you could just check what versions you have here. So you could just install whatever versions you want. Like you want to go browser to hacking or some shit, you can just go install Kali and uh, it's up to you. And everything what you use is like a different package manager for it. Like uh, for Debian and Ubuntu, you will have app packet manager. And for OpenSUSE, you have a different kind of type, type of package manager. I don't know how to express those in the words because it's like, it's like little pain to download it, but in some cases it's good. Yeah, I accept it. I've been using open source a lot, but in some cases it's shit. Uh, I just accept. It's the truth. Or I, I would like to be correct. I could just say that in the comments. Um, when it comes to it, you can install whatever distro you want, whatever you do for the shit with it. So, so as you Assuming after installing that, you will just assign your root name and uh, password towards it. And after that, you will just um, have a WSL natively. So to have that, you just keep WSL. It will it could take some time, I guess. Yeah, I got it. So, so it just mounted me into that, but. Uh, So, uh, so I just got this, but you will be getting some other, uh, some other uh, type of font or something because it will be in, it will be in C drive, but what I have is in E drive, something like totally external from the C drive. So, uh, don't freak out if you just have something like, uh, uh, not like this. So at the end of the day, you just need a functional terminal. That's it. So, uh, the thing with. Uh, Python is like uh, you don't have a Python package pre-installed in your um, in your Linux machine. So if you just give on pip, you won't have a pip command not from. So you just go first update your system. So uh, After update, you just get this uh, stuff. Uh, let's just wait for a few hours. After updating it, you will just get you just you upgrade. It will take some time. It looks like complete within seconds. I won't be do, I won't be skipping this video, but if it takes some time, uh, we will be skipping this video. That's yes, it. Yes. It's mainly this. Oh, we don't need to skip this video, unfortunately. So with that, you have you have upgraded your system up to this current stable version, and you just go to the uh, install. Uh, Yeah, uh, I'll just skip the part where the installation is completed and afterwards we'll just um, go to meanwhile it's been installing I'll just give you a simple insight how the WSL works so that you'll get a better idea like how we do uh, work on that stuff either for this uh, installing Python, Python packages or you could just uh, use some other uh, some other, for some other projects too, right? I'll just get in the page. Uh, imagine this box is your system. Imagine this box is your personal computer. Your personal computer. What happens is like you are allocating a small portion of your uh, personal computer to a subsystem, like more like a virtual machine. But in a virtual machine case, 
uh, you couldn't have a communication between your PC and your virtual machine. But in this case, you will have a communication between your PC and your virtual machine here. So this is your VM, which is Linux. So uh, you have some stuff here, like uh, let us say for making this thing more easier, like let us say some variables here. So these variables are Linux specific. So if you have some task using these variables, what the system does is like, uh, moreover, mounts these thing into this, and then gives that out. It executes it and gives its output and returns back to PC. So that's pretty much it. How this uh, Windows under Linux works. Windows Windows subsystem of Linux works. So I'll just show you after installing Jazz, but uh, it will be kind of cool. Like uh, it will be like <laughs> SkyFi shit or something. I don't know, man. Uh, like it will be really like I would say. It will be really um, uh, cool to know that you could, uh, you could uh, literally run those Linux, uh, Linux system under your uh, under your computer and use it instead of using Docker and something else. So it makes your process more more easier and more hassle free. That's the thing what I'm trying to say now. So I'll just check over installation now. Yeah, it completed. So, so if you just give pip now. You have a lot of commands here. So what you need to do is check over these commands when you got time. So what I am going to do now is hit install numpy let us say something like that. By saying ah, it's downloading. So there's no issue with that. Now let's go with so Jax. Uh, what is this is like um, uh, imagine you have a lot of matrices you want to do operation with those matrices but a uh, thing which python provides you know we could go for a deep learning library such as uh, such as tensorflow or pytorch but jax is more like uh, using numpy but uh, but with acceleration of gpu and tensor processing unit if you got tpus and collab Google Colab, you could use TPUs also with native NumPy, NumPy code. But um, you could also you integrate with uh, PyTorch and with TensorFlow. We'll just look into that in future videos. But this is just you could uh, you could do NumPy thing with Jax. The why we are using Jax is the next question is like uh, it is an auto auto grad. Like if you do gradient descent, which we'll be cover in the next video or some few videos after um, it automatically computes gradients for you it makes us more easier to go towards the minimum loss function and and uh, if you are going towards the minimum loss function that's where your optimization optimization problem is there. Uh, I guess you won't, most of them won't get the stuff which I said because I will be covering them in the next videos but uh, it's not uh, wrong to know something new right yeah, this is what Jax does. Oh, yeah, you got kind of installed like check this pip, pip, but if you are if you are installing uh, Jax, you will just uh, download everything else. So go to installation Jax, you can go to installation idea. So it's about up to you. If you want to install that uh, Jax uses CPU instead of GPUs, you can go in here. Or if you just want to use with CUDA, you could go here. So you could just go here. Paste this command over there. So I'll just give you this also in the description below, so you won't have any hassle to download. So I'll just skip into the part where it's complete, so that it it will take a lot of time. Like uh, you're installing from scratch, right? Like there's a lot of libraries to consider, and later on you'll just get this. So I'll be skipping and uh, seeing you in the part where the installation is complete. Uh, after installing, I just cleared the terminal now. But uh, after installing, like the, um, you can just go to Python three and you can just write to import that if there is something error, it will uh, uh, give you an error. Um, and after that, you just give I just copy this from like after default back. And if you have a GPU, it will be given, returning you a GPU. But if you have a CPU to make returning you a CPU so that check you could just 
uh, installed correctly. So it's GPU, so it's fine. So, so we can just exit from the terminal. So with that, JAX installation is completed. So let's jump into PyTorch installation. So for PyTorch, I just like to install them locally. Whatever installation I do, I'd like to install them locally rather than using our phone and uh, using a virtual system and uh, using virtual system under it. So it's more of a personal preference, but your choice, it's your choice. Like, um, at the end of the day, it does the thing well. So that's what we care about. So after that, you can just go open a terminal again and now you can just check whether you have a pip. If you don't have a pip, you can just go to Python and install pip and do their procedures. So I won't be covering this in the video because it's kind of self-explanatory. So you go like you have this. I'll just provide you in the description. So with the CUDA, uh, with the CUDA version, what you want, you can just download it and you can copy it, paste it here. So you have. Yes. So I kind of like completed this installation already. So I just got recommend requirement already satisfied. But you will get uh you will get a downloading uh, symbol. So after installing PyTorch, you can just go to Python and import torch and to check whether uh we have GPU of CUDA or something else, we could just use torch dot. Uh, CUDA dot is available. It's taking more than usual. Simple that. Yeah. improved. So if you don't have CUDA or something, or if it's like uh, wrongly configured, you will get uh, false as an output. So with PyTorch and JAX installed, uh, uh, we kind of completed this uh, video. So uh, we'll just start with, uh, next video should be something like, we'll just start with uh, basic operations on what we do uh, with this thing and how an ML, what is an ML problem and how we could find an optimal solution for it. And after that, we'll just, um, Look over ML algorithms, and we'll just make uh, uh, make some videos about uh, stuff like stuff like more uh, ML algorithms and and uh, so on. Like that, I have a lot of stuff in my mind. <laughs> uh, I'll just make the next video on say what are all stuffs we're gonna encounter in this tutorial and a detailed version of it in the next uh, next video because. I've uh, kind of planned something else, but I uh, want to check feasibility of the audiences and feasibility of mm -hmm. myself to teach these things. And after that, uh, we'll spare, jump straight into programming and stuff and learning theoretically. Um, speaking of theory, if I just happen to take some notes or learn something new, I'll be giving them in the description. Or if I just took uh, notes personally from the books, I'll just uh, share you those in the Google Drive. So, I uh, kind of be hooked on it. Uh, that's what I can say. Yeah. With that, uh, we kind of completed this tutorial. And thank you for staying up to this. And I hope you all have a good day. Like if you like, dislike if you dislike. And I'm on.